I want to say 70s book, possibly 80s, uh, book about um, periods. And, and basically it becomes kind of a diary that this little, this girl is writing to God as she develops and is able to like express her thoughts to her diary in a way and her diary as God in a way that she isn't able to talk to other people. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. I mean, where we get the most depictions, I think, of of period blood and the the most visual representations yeah. of period blood, particularly because we don't we don't like to talk about periods. We don't like to see mm. period blood, and the only place mm. where we're willing to see blood is in a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. And also, I think, I mean, I haven't watched Mad Men, but I think uh, something you talked about in a previous episode that in uh, Orange is the New Black, it's also Mm -hmm. addressed, isn't it? It is. Uh, They talk about periods, especially because it's a women's prison. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, tampons and pads are something that is a very uh, sought after commodity. It's something that they have to buy themselves and or something that the the prison has to provide to them. And one of the storylines is that as a way of cutting costs, they decide to give the women menstrual cups instead of um, instead of pads and and tampons and the problems that that leads to. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, but in Carrie, menstrual blood or blood in general is featured very prominently. Carrie, the main character, she's 17. She's very shy and quiet. She doesn't really have friends. Uh, And in the film, she's also kind of the outcast. So she gets bullied at school. So I'm just giving you like a synopsis so you know what I'm talking about. And Liz, if you want to add anything, then please do, because I think you've seen it long before me. Yeah, I read the book as a kid, and then I have watched both the uh, 2013, the 20, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, 2013, the 2002, and the 1976. So wow. I, I am familiar with all three. You know everything. Okay. Well, I, I watched mean, everything. No, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the 2013 version before I watched the 1976 version because I thought, saw that in cinema when it came out. The intro of the film is there's this class, girls, they have sports class, and then they are in the changing room. And I feel like from the very first moment, you can see that it's a very male perspective because we have like naked breasts uh, already in the intro of the film. And there's kind of naked girls hitting each other on the butt, which is just so ridiculous, right? Um, Then Carrie's under the shower. She starts touching herself. And we see close-ups of her soaping her skin very sensually, which is where I was always like, seriously it's very typical for the 1970s i feel like it's every really? shower and like pe teen scene ever in any movie in the 70s okay yeah yeah because i just i and felt 80s. like i mean <laughs> it, it ended in the 90s is what you're saying uh no it did not end in the 90s but it's not i feel like it's not as prominent well i don't know i mean i i I think it's a pretty common trope of like yeah. that we start out, we see it a lot in college movies, especially, and we see it with like guys peeking in on women. And I think that that's the, the male yeah. perspective that you're talking about, particularly. It's like they're spying on her while she's doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and there's a, I think it's in Animal House actually, but it could be in some other kind of dude bro movie from the 70s and 80s that uh, they basically, they, they, poke a hole and this is like a really common thing in 70s and 80s like dude bro movies is putting a Mm -hmm. hole in the wall between the men's locker room and the women's locker room so that the guys can watch the women shower Uh, okay yes i mean it's it's awful it's terrible yeah but it's a totally common trope yeah okay i wasn't aware of that i was just thinking that it's completely ridiculous you know um just so you know what the scene's like. So there is this cheesy music in the background and there's a lot of um, soft focus, mm-hmm. a lot of close-ups of her body and she's starting to soap her skin very sensually, mm-hmm. right? And what I was thinking was, this is just totally caters to like a very voyeuristic male gaze. Well, and that fits with the this trope of the guys like peering in on them, like spying on them from yeah. from their own locker room. Even though that's not what's happening in this case, it it yeah. fits in with that trope. Absolutely, yeah. And also it doesn't make sense because she's like in the changing room showers amongst girls that usually bully her and what she's starting to do is touching herself, which is okay. Yeah. So many aspects of the film make me feel like it's a straight male porn fantasy of what's going on in like girls' 
rocker rooms. Yeah, I mean, and she's not really touching herself because we find out that she's like hyper religious and that's not really something she would do. She's just showering. Like it it could be interpreted as something very innocent. She's just like washing herself, but it is made out to be in a way that looks like she's touching herself. Yeah, absolutely. And then all of a sudden the music stops because while she's showering, she suddenly sees blood. And as as few as we know that what's happening is that she got her period for the first time. But she doesn't know that because she has a very conservative religious mother that didn't teach her about those things. So she doesn't know what's happening and she thinks she's very ill or dying. Or Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, she's panicking because she's all of a sudden bleeding. Mm hmm. That's another aspect that I found ridiculous is that she's bleeding very heavily. Uh, and that's usually not how menstruation happens, at least not for the first time. We've talked about this. It looks like she's <laughs> gushing. Like I know, I know. Yeah, that's not what your first period usually looks like. So no. again, that's a very male perspective of what menstruation looks like. And it also makes it very intense and very scary very monstrous because it's so exaggerated so yeah but she starts panicking she runs towards her colleagues her like female colleagues her uh, classmates and she screams for help because she doesn't know what's going on and they start bullying her start calling her names and throwing menstrual products at her which was also a moment where i was like really you know how much we pay for that shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I was. We like, don't throw and it Did at you each see other, the no. size of the pads? Sweet Jesus, they were like enormous, like diaper sized yeah. pads. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, no, she, uh, like uh, tampons are expensive. Don't and and pads yeah. are expensive. Like don't don't just sh- throw that shit. We pay taxes on that shit. We don't throw it at each other. Listen, I know. <laughs> Yeah, but those girls are not just assholes, but they were also very misogynistic, right? Because they shout, plug it up at her. And I feel like this is one of the many instances in the film where women are very cruel to each other, but also cruel in a very sexist way. And kind of the most perfect Asians of patriarchy themselves. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and then she's saved by teacher. Well, kind of. I mean, first the teacher smacks her across the face like, get it together, and smacks her. Yes. Which is also yeah. so like 1970s, like yeah, like pull it together, smack, like, like yeah, that's not good, you know, not a good. It's not even like, parenting. Like I would say, it's not good no. parenting, but like it's not her parent; it's her like teacher. It's not good like, pedagogy. In in German, we call this schwarze Pädagogik. You know, we yes. just <laughs> yeah, um, but. The teacher, let's say the teacher uh, uh, comes in and yes. ends the whole scene. <laughs> I and think that's a better description. Her eventually, eventually. Yeah, yeah. And then they go to the principal's office and, uh, no, 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 actually before that, in the shower, a bulb kind of explodes and that way Carrie realizes she has telekinetic powers. And then a few minutes later, she's in the principal's office and out of anger, she makes an ashtray move around and turn around and then she realizes... That she can actually control that telekinetic thing that's going on. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've always thought that she, you know, with the coming of her period, like, so too comes her telekinetic powers. Yeah, exactly. But they don't make, in other versions of it, that's not actually clear. Uh, really? Because it, it looks like in other versions that she may actually have the ability to do telekinesis much earlier. Okay. But I think that the implication is here that, like, she has just come into her telekinetic powers as she gets her period. Like, she becomes yeah. a woman and her telekinesis starts. Yeah. I think in this in this version, at least, it's very obvious that yeah. her na- supernatural power set in at the moment of her first period. And that's, I think, very relevant because, again, it kind of makes this connection of her bleeding being both powerful and magical Mm -hmm. Uh, and i think what's also relevant is that from the very beginning we see this connection of her being angry with her telekinetic powers because Mm -hmm. we have this scene in the shower where she's clearly very upset and the bulb explodes then the principal kind of makes her angry and the ashtray flies around and then on her way home she kind of retaliates against the boy who teases her by making him fall off his bike so she kind of the force behind it is Inga usually Mm -hmm. which I think is also interesting well what I think is interesting about that scene with the principal is so the teacher the gym teacher has has period blood on her 
pants on her shorts mm-hmm. uh, when when she goes in to talk to him and he is clearly super grossed out by it and yeah. he doesn't even want to say the word period he doesn't want to have anything to do with like the idea of talking about periods or blood or anything and so there's this really awkward conversation between the teacher who's in her his office smoking like i can't believe that she, her which is also amazing <laughs> I know, so 70s. Um, yeah. <laughs> Everything was allowed, including smacking kids. Yes. Um, but we have, like, we have her, like, talking about periods very openly and, like, saying, you know, she needs to be, it's just her first period, like, someone needs to tell her about it, blah, blah, blah. And the, the principal being like, well, uh, why don't, why don't we send her to the nurse? Or, uh, why don't we just send her home? Like, I don't, I don't really want to deal with someone's period blood. Like, and he's really grossed out by the period blood yeah. on her shorts. But are you sure that this is also in the 1976 version? Because I also only noticed it in a 2013 version. It's really subtle in the 76 version. Okay. But he kind of looks over at her shorts and is like really creeped out by it. Okay. I didn't yeah. notice that. Yeah, yeah. I only noticed that in the 2013 version, um, the principal is like, a uh, principal is like, why don't you talk about? Because the teacher's trying to explain to her what happened to her mm-hmm. body that she's on a period now, and the principal comes in and is like, why don't you talk about this with a nurse or something? Yeah, you know, yeah. Just, just don't, well, don't. <laughs> in the nineteen seven, in the nineteen seventy six version, she doesn't really dis- ex- describe what's happening to the girl in the yeah. office with Carrie and the principal they kind of talk about it with Carrie in the other room but in mm-hmm. the 2013 version they're like all three of them together in the same room and so yeah. it's this really uncomfortable like two women talking about periods and a voyeuristic yeah. man there being like I don't want to be any part of this yeah. whereas he would have been fine being a voyeur watching her touch herself in the shower now yeah. as a voyeur in this scene he's very uncomfortable yeah and also I feel like in the 2013 version it's framed different because I felt like at least that he's kind of ridiculed a bit in that moment. You know, yeah. it's kind of this, he's kind of a personification of this male discomfort with periods and that's satirized. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. But in the 1976 version, right after the scene at the school in the principal's office, we see Carrie's mom for the first time. Mm hmm. And what she's doing is she's visiting uh, the mother of one of Carrie's classmates, too. And in that scene, we learn that she's very religious. And what I found very striking is that she says to the other mother, I'm spreading the gospel of God's salvation through Christ's blood. And I was like, okay, again, blood, as so often in this movie. Not only is Carrie, you know, uh, introduced in a scene that is connected to period blood, but also her mom is connected to blood from the very beginning. Yeah, and I I also think that, you know, that very first scene where Carrie's got the blood on her hands and the kids are making fun of her, you know, that is just a foreshadowing connection to the very last scene at the prom yes, where they're, yes. they're making fun of her there and then, then she's covered in pig's blood. Yeah, there's a lot of mirroring going on yeah, in the yeah. film. Mm-hmm. And then she goes home to her mother and her mother is abusive towards her. So the first thing that happens, because her mom already knows that she had a period because uh, I think the teacher called her or something. Mm-hmm. And the first thing she does is she hits her in the face with a Bible <laughs> There's a lot of smacking kids around. Actually, yep. in both, uh, I feel like in, in all the versions, there's a lot of smacking yeah. smacking carry around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She doesn't have a good life, you guys. No, she does not. <laughs> no, she's bad, bad day after bad day. Yeah. So her mom is not just very religious, but a religious fanatic. And she, throughout the film, she keeps teaching her about sin and how bodies are sinful and how sexuality is sinful and how especially women are sinful. And so when she learns that she's got her period, she hits her in the face with a Bible and then she begins to preach to her about the sin of women and how they must uh, pray for her, quote, woman, weak, wicked, sinning souls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she tells uh, her about Eve and that she was weak and that that was why God punished her with the curse of blood and the curse of childbearing and all of that. And then she also says that Carrie is one of Eve's daughters and that she kind of inherited her sins. And then in a very violent scene, she... Uh, yeah, she, as I said, she keeps physically abusing her, basically, and shouting Bible verses at her. And then she drags her in a cupboard, I think by her hair, even, or by her, like, head. Then she has to stay in the cupboard and pray for forgiveness. Mm. So that's that. So yes. that's 
that's not a very good reaction when you when you you know learn that your child had her first period is not that's no. not how you do it another instance 